Welcome to the last video related to long-term liabilities. It's taken a while. We're going to talk about solvency, leverage, and coverage ratios. Basically, what's the liquidity that the firm has and are they going to remain a going concern? Leverage and coverage ratios. Why are we doing this? The point of this kind of analysis is to look at the debt, the liabilities on the balance sheet and say, okay, is the firm going to be able to meet its short-term obligations and is it going to stay solvent? The two different questions that we have here are uh, that the, these ratios go into are questions of solvency and liquidity. All right. Solvency is the ability for the company to meet its long term debt obligations and liquidity is how fast a company can turn uh, assets into cash. How liquid is the firm? Do they have a lot of cash on hand? Do they have marketable securities, things that can be turned into cash really quickly? Um, solvency is in particular important. I know a lot of people that end up uh, kind of like uh, what I'll call the event horizon of debt, where they've reached a point where they're almost at this. You think about the black hole, the event horizon is where light can no longer escape the gravitational pull of the black hole. Well, debt has a similar effect. You can get to a certain point where you're so in debt that you can't get out of this gravitational pull down to bankruptcy because of the amount of debt load that you have. As a result, solvency is to try to determine if, you've, if you're getting close to or if have passed that breaking point of spiraling down into the black hole of chapter 11 and declaring bankruptcy. That's the whole point of solvency. Are you going to remain solvent? And liquidity is, you know, are you going to be able to meet those short-term obligations? So for liquidity, the two that are usually used are the current ratio and the quick ratio, current ratio, as it sounds, you know, remember, say it slow, you're going to know. Current ratio, current assets over current liabilities. Done. The higher this uh, metric is, the better. So the higher the current ratio, that's the more liquid firm is. Quick ratio is current assets, net inventory over current liabilities. The quick ratio basically kind of gets a lit, it's a little bit more stringent, takes out inventory. Uh, inventory needs to be sold to turn into cash in it, so it uses everything but inventory in that calculation. Current assets minus inventory over current liabilities. So the solvency ratios, it's long-term debt obligations. You look at leverage ratios that measure the, the level of debt in capital structure. Uh, and these have a balance sheet focus. Debt to equity ratio, how much debt you have to equity. Uh, if you say it's low, you're going to know. And if you say it's low, you can kind of figure out the majority of these metrics. Coverage ratios measure the ability to cover debt, uh, debt payments with uh, cash flows. So an example is interest coverage ratio, operating income, or sometimes EBIT, uh, earnings before interest taxes, uh, over interest expense. All right, so total interest expense over... EBIT is one that's used. So these are some of the ratios for solvency to debt obligations, leverage ratios and coverage ratios, debt to assets, numerator, total debt over total assets, makes a lot of sense. Debt to capital ratio, total debt to debt plus shareholders equity, all right? Similar to assets, uh, measuring over assets, except for you take out all the other liabilities that aren't debt. Debt to equity, total debt over total shareholders equity. Financial leverage ratio, Average total ass assets over average shareholders equity, right? And a lot of the questions that you get will ask you uh, uh, not to calculate these things, but to think about how these will change with different firm events. So with increasing debt or impairing assets, what's going to happen to these ratios? That's how the questions show up. Calculations. Yeah, anybody, any monkey can do the calculation on this stuff and just, we don't want to do that. We want to actually know the intuition of where these things go. Coverage ratios, interest coverage ratio, EBIT over, you know, interest payments, fixed charge ratio, EBIT plus lease payments over lease payments plus uh, interest payments plus lease payments. All right, so fixed rate, uh, leverage ratios, coverage ratios, uh, they're pretty intuitive. And the way that it's going to show up is, uh, a lot of time, I wouldn't waste a lot of time memorizing these things. What I would know is, okay, the way I'm going to see these come up is, or I'm going to have to understand the nature of a ratio and what's in the numerator and the denominator and what would change given an impairment or, you know, a revaluation of an asset. So solvency ratio. So this is for 2008, 2007 for uh, Nokia and Ericsson. Uh, if we do debt to total assets, uh, uh, which is calculated at the bottom 
we have 11.2% uh, and it goes up to 11.2% from 29 uh, and debt to total assets kind of remains the same between Nokia and Ericsson. It looks like Nokia is taking on a bit more debt and it seems like it's in line with its peer. And so debt to total assets over time, looking at this is, is, is kind of interesting. It tells a little bit. Interest coverage ratio uh, for 2008 goes down. It was at 135 and it goes down to 32. And interest coverage ratio uh, was higher in 2007 also uh, for Ericsson and goes down to 9.6. And the reason for this is that if you look at it, it's because of the decrease in EBIT and increase in interest payments that uh, Nokia's went down. And a similar thing happened to Ericsson. So this is the type of analysis that you'd need to be able to talk about and look at and say, okay, well, what's driving this? Is it the numerator or the denominator? That's how all these ratio questions kind of work. And that's what you need to know related to solvency and liquidity ratios. See you in the next videos.